Australia's National Science Agency has begun researching how to treat the deadly coronavirus after Australian scientists were the first outside of China to grow the virus in a lab. Once the CSIRO determines its key characteristics, if you like, testing can start on potential vaccines within weeks. Joining me now is Dr Rob Grenfell, the CSIRO Director of Health and Biosecurity. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for your time. What is the significance of growing this uh, virus in a lab outside of China? This is that we've actually got it in our laboratory. So Globally, we've, over the last two weeks, as soon as this infection emerged, we've been trying to uh, work with all of our um, collaborators globally to get our hands on a sample so we could start this important work. Now we've got it in the laboratory, the work's begun. Okay, so where are you up to in the work, with the work? Are you close to uh, testing for a vaccine or, or what steps need to take place before then? We're certainly starting this um, uh, Herculean task, um, not at the beginning of the race. So after the SARS and MERS outbreaks, uh, we were working on characterising those particular viruses and also working on uh, the particular lab models that we need to in fact actually test those viruses. So our first step is one, replicate that virus, as you said, get it to quantities that we can actually use across our various biological media, test that model we use for SARS, and then from that point we'll be uh, moving into the vaccine testing, which should hopefully begin around about uh, the start of March. Does it have some of the same characteristics as the common flu? Are there things you can draw from the vaccine we have from the flu every year? Uh, ab ab absolutely not. This is a completely right. different virus. Uh, and the technology that uh, has been developed uh, by one of the uh, collab international collaborators, happening to be UQ, uh, in, uh, in Brisbane is uh, quite unique in the way that it works. So uh, we'll be uh, testing that one in a few weeks' time to see how that actually works. There are two other candidates from uh, CEPI, which is the Coalition for Emergent uh, Disease Preparedness, which is a global organisation that's been supporting this work. OK, and so what does the CSIRO have in terms of uh, the role with inside that uh, global effort? Do we have special expertise that we bring to it? Yes, our, our teams um, have internationally regarded expertise in dealing with these volatile infections. We've been working in the past on such things as Ebola, Zika and, uh, of course, certainly closer to home, the uh, Hendra virus, where we... Uh, typed the uh, vaccine and uh, then went right through uh, from uh, discovery of the agent to uh, a commercial vaccine. How far away do you think we are from a vaccine, realistically? Yeah, look, uh, the University of Queensland uh, certainly threw the gauntlet down by saying 16 weeks. Um, that's a real fair call. The, look, the Zika vaccine was developed in six months, so that's um, uh, certainly set as targets. <laughs> it's a complex step and if everything goes right, we should be starting to test the vaccine candidates. Now that means that then after we've successfully tested those, uh, which should be about the 16 week mark, they're then ready for trials in humans, which is uh, studies that we don't do. We, overnight we've seen the first death outside of China. What are the characteristics of this virus once it gets away from the epicentre? Uh, is, is it as strong as it is in China or does it lose some of its punch, if you like? Yeah, look, uh, coronaviruses have this nasty habit of, uh, of uh, mutating themselves uh, as they find a new host. So let's imagine this has been living in uh, probably an animal reservoir and as it's got into humans it's uh, deciding, now how am I going to behave, uh, to put it simply. Now, uh, we've been looking at it's about fourth or fifth generation virus in China and we're uh, in negotiations with China to get our hands on some of those samples as well so that we can uh, compare those whilst we do our testing, uh, which is very important to do. Um, the gene code has been changing slightly, but it, it's ever so slightly in the sense of, uh, of where it is as we've seen at the moment. So, yeah, we are watching for those components. Uh, the virus that's in Australia will almost certainly be the... Uh, first or second generations that uh, were emerging at the start of January. That would be the time course it would fit. And uh, really it's essentially um, watching and considering what ways we're actually going to approach uh, to manage this. Does the reaction to this, is it justified? I mean, we've seen us um, lift our travel warning. The travel warning is do not travel to China. We've seen uh, direct flights into China stop, not just by Australia, but, but many, many countries. Um, when you look at 
this virus, is the biggest concern the fact that it's novel? It's new uh, and you're worried about the unknowns or is it something else? Look, SARS and MERS were particularly nasty viruses. Uh, MERS, for instance, had around about a 40% uh, fatality rate, which makes it very, very nasty. Thankfully, it wasn't that infectious. Um, the SARS virus itself, as we probably remember, and following on an economic report, it took around about six months to sort that one out, both economically trade and, and the rest of it. And again, that wasn't that infectious. This one's very infectious, but thankfully, the fatality rate seems to be somewhere around about what we experienced with the swine flu. So that makes it very important, which is why the WHO has declared this uh, international emergency. Quarantine's the first step of trying to contain the infection. It won't treat it, um, and certainly there will be leeches with regards to it getting out uh, uh, through across some of the borders and the barriers and, um, as it emerges across there. But by containing it means we can, uh, to a degree, um, minimise the effect that the uh, infection will actually have as rather than a big impact as it's having in Wuhan at the moment. All right, Dr. Rob Brenfell from the CSIRO, indeed the Director of Health and Biosecurity. We are glad to have you on the show and glad to have you working on this for us. Appreciate your time. Look, thank you so much for yours.